Welcome back. This is part two of the Pro Poker Tools range of hand syntax video. Um, now we're going to talk about combining ranges with combinators. Combinator is just a fancy word for something that combines stuff. But anyway, um, you, you use the comma for or. So ace king, comma ace queen is an ace king or an ace queen. Uh, ten, comma nine, comma five is a hand with a ten or a nine or a five or some combination. Uh, you use the colon for and. So xx colon 15% is a hold'em hand that is suited, it's the xx part, and in the top 15% of hands. Uh, similarly, ace ace colon xxyy in Omaha. It's an Omaha hand. It's got a pair of aces and is double suited. And the last combinator is the exclamation point for not. So star exclamation point A is at any hand, but not a hand with an ace. And 15% exclamation point WXYZ exclamation point XXXX is an Omaha hand in the top 15%, but not a rainbow hand, and not a monotone hand. Uh, combinators have some rules. The constraints, that's the not and the and, have the same precedence and are left associative. Uh, so that means you can chain them together, like we saw in the previous slide. The or, that's the comma, has lower precedence, and you group with parentheses. Um, this precedent stuff is, you know, if you're not familiar with it, it's, it's just like when you were learning, you know, basic math in you know, hopefully elementary school or high school. Um, if you write, you know, 2 plus 3 times 5, you do the multiplication part first. So you say 3 times 5 is 15, and then add 2. In that, in that case, you say that multiplication has higher precedence. It's the same thing here. The, you do the, the not and the and part first, and you do the comma after. Of course, the parentheses have highest precedence so that you can overcome that. A couple examples will show this. So 1010 colon xxyy exclamation point 15%. It's as if you had grouped it like this. Um, tens double suited, but not 15%. Um, if you write, uh, you know, suited hand in the top 15%, or offsuit hand in the top 5%, it's as if you grouped it this way. So you put the parentheses around um, the stuff between the commas. Um, which is, usually this is what, what you expect, so that's good. Um, if the general rule is if, if you want to apply a constraint to a number of ranges separated with commas, you just put them in parentheses. So, you know, if you want to say an ace of 10 or a 9 in the top 15%, you've got to, you put the comma separated stuff in parentheses, just like that. Um, so I hope that clears that up. <laughs> but um, you just, you, you look at the examples and, and you get the idea. J just whenever you have bunch of comma separated stuff and you're applying a constraint put it in parentheses if you do that you'll be fine and if you're ever unsure about you know what goes with what just put stuff in parentheses you can always add parentheses if you're not sure um, spans is an is another part of the syntax is if you are having a range that predicts uh, that varies predictably uh, rank by rank so aces um, to jacks. Ace, ace, uh, dash, jack, jack is a pair of aces, kings, queens, or jacks. So ace, x, king, y, to jack, x, ten, y's is, you know, ace, king, to jack, ten, offsuit. Um, for Omaha, this thing here is a medium to large rundown. Uh, it's pretty much what you'd expect. You can use a trailing plus or minus to run a range all the way up or all the way down. So five, five plus is a pair of fives or better. And seven, x, six of x, Minus is a suited connector no bigger than 7, 6. Uh, you can have multiple spans in the same subrange, so you, you put those in brackets. For instance, if you say 10 plus 5 minus, that's a hand with one card 10 or higher and one card 5 or lower. You just separate them by, by putting them in brackets, square brackets like that. Um, for Omaha, if you put aces to jacks in brackets and 10, 9 to 7, 6, it's a hand with a big pair and uh, two medium connected cards. Um, 
And just a quick note, ace is always high in span, so ace to five goes from the top, not from the bottom. Doesn't matter what game, it's always from the top. And uh, another piece of syntax we have is card lists. So you can list concrete ranks and suits for a particular card in square brackets. So if you say in brackets ace or king or two, and then five of spades, it's a hand with an ace, a king, or a two, and the five of spades. It's very basic. Here we have a hand that has a heart or a diamond or the ten of spades and an ace. Uh, just like we supported multiple spans, you can support multiple card lists also. So um, this is a sort of silly example, but it's an even card and an odd card. Uh, there is also a no pair constraint if you want to quickly specify that a uh, hand has no pairs in it. You just put curly braces around all the cards. So this thing here are, uh, describes a hand with two Broadway cards that are not paired. Yeah, it's useful for high-low games. Um, one tiny piece of syntactic sugar for stud is there's this pipe character and you can use it to separate parts of a range. Um, almost always when you're working with ranges of hands and stud you know what the up cards are but you don't know what the down cards are so you can use the pipe to separate the down cards and the up cards and um, it just saves a lot of typing. So um, the ranges on the left and the right hand side of a pipe are completely separate uh, so if you want for instance this range here is either a five in the hole or a big pair in the hole, and then the five of spades show it. Um, here's a fancier one. This is the ace of hearts and, of, and eight of hearts showing, and in the hole we either have two hearts or two non-paired low cards. Um, so ranges on either side of the pipe are totally independent, so don't try to get too fancy with this. Again, this is just a convenience so you don't have to keep typing the five of spades every time. I mean, you could do get the same result by typing ace, ace, jack, jack, five of ace, ace, five of spades to jack, jack, of five of spades, and then five star, five of spades, and then a bunch of things, five of spades. It's just to save you having to type the up card range over and over again. Um, one thing we should discuss is card order. Um, when does card order matter? Well. It certainly doesn't matter for whole cards in games like Hold'em and Omaha. Um, so if you write Ace-King or King-Ace, they're exactly the same range. Um, in Omaha, here's a little bit of a tricky situation if you're not careful. If you write Ace-King-Queen-Jack and XXYZ, and Jack-Queen-King-Ace and XXYZ, those are exactly the same ranges. The ordered is insignificant. So you can't look at this range here and interpret it as ace, king of x, queen of y, jack of z. That's not what it says. It says a hand that has an ace, a king, a queen, and a jack, and three suits. Okay? It doesn't specify which cards have what suit. If you really want the x's to go with the ace and the king, just write that. Ace of x, king of x, queen of y, jack of z. Um, but yeah, you know, Hold'em and Omaha whole cards, the order is irrelevant. Uh, when does it matter? Well, in variants of seven card stud, like stud, stud, high, low, res, the order of the first two cards doesn't matter, right? Your first two whole cards. But the order of all the other cards matters. And so ace, king with a jack of spades up, and king, ace with a jack of spades up are the same hand. That ace, king with jack of spades up, and ace, jack of spades in the whole, or the king up, are not the same hand. Now, you might be asking, well, that may be true, but why does it matter in an all inequity si simulation? Well, the answer is, it doesn't. If you're just doing all inequity, it doesn't matter at all. But, um, uh, the odds oracle and the website uh, does a lot more than just all inequity. And so, in the general case, you need to respect the order of the cards because you can ask questions like, you know, what happened on 4th Street, what happened on 5th Street? Um, so we have to preserve that order. Um, for flop games, uh, the order of the flop doesn't matter, but the order of the turn in the river matters. Um, same general principle. So XXY and XYX describe the same flop range. It's a two-tone flop, right? Um, but 
XXXY and XXYX are different board ranges. The first describes a board where the flop was suited and the turn was offsuit. And the second one describes a flop that was two-toned and a turn that completed the flush draw, if there was one. Okay, so those are different. And um, that's that. Uh, there is a bit of extra um, help for to keep you from typing extremely long things all the time. Um, we have macros, which are also called save ranges, and they start with a dollar sign. Um, and it's basically just pure text substitution. So you type dollar something, and then it substitutes a string. So dollar s is colon xx. So this stands for suited and hold them. So if you write ace king dollar s, it translate that it translates that into ace king colon xx. Similarly, dollar O translates to XY, so that gives you offsuit. Um, dollar B is a big card, and dollar L is a low card. So these are these are just conveniences. Um, they continue until the end of all the letters and numbers or space. So if you write dollar B, dollar B, it's two big cards. Um, if you try to write dollar BK, you get an error error because it would interpret this as a macro called BK. So if it, that ever happens to you, just put a space. Um, if you write $B space K, then you've got a big card and a king. And just a little plug, you can create your own range macros with the odds oracle. So if you've got you know a bunch of standard preflop ranges that you've painstakingly created, you can save them uh, and give them a name. So that's very convenient. And that just about wraps it up. Um, if you need help, you can check out the docs at propokertools.com. Um, we've also got a, a forum there. Um, I, I try to answer questions there as much as possible. And uh, you can also email me at support at propokertools.com.